I was sneaking around a certain Cartier watch with a price in mind and then I checked the piece on Chrono24 and I thought, oops. <laughs> Welcome to Caseback Watches, my name is Tim and in this video I'd like to show you a method how to find out if the increase in price for a certain brand or a certain watch is real or maybe wishful thinking of some sellers waiting for the fool. And you can use this method for every watch brand you like, Rolex, Cartier, Breitling, whatever you wish. And in the second part of the video I'd like to show you my watch strap combination of choice these day, my favorite watch strap combination. And I'd like to show you three new items in the shop that can, and I'm very proud to state this, they can compete quality wise with Cartier. Yes, this is the second part then. And we have timestamps so you can choose the part of the video you wish to see. But now let's start with Cartier. A few months ago I made this video about the Cartier Basculant and the, and the increase in price. Pretty, pretty uh, big increase to be honest. And I was a bit astonished. And then um, I wanted to add another watch to my collection. And this was, or this is to be honest, the Cartier Tank American because it's just a lovely watch. And I want the mid-size model, the mid-size in 18 karat gold. And I remembered that watch Years ago it was on Chrono used vintage for let's say three and a half thousand euros. Those are roughly 3,800 US dollars I believe. And so I thought, yeah, it's in range. I could spend that kind of money, why not? And then I checked it on Chrono and crazy, crazy prices. I went to the website, Cartier website then, and the retail price for my model of choice is 14,000 euros. Ouch, 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 14,000 euros. And on the used market as well, prices are very, very high. And so my job now is to find out if this trend is a real trend or it's just a small fire along the road. This is uh, now the, the task. And generally speaking, people start with rumors. They just listen to rumors. They call their dealer and they ask, what do you think about the prices at a certain, in, in a certain niche for a certain brand? And then the dealer tells them, well, this is soft, this is not soft and so and so on. And of course, this is not very certain, this is not very secure because the dealer only sees its tiny part of the market, very likely. And when you take rumors from watch forums or on YouTube, then you have this problem that people there are in constant need of content. So for example, the YouTuber calls a dealer and then tells you, we have a massive trend because of such and such, but the truth behind it, he has made one phone call and that's it. And this is of course not enough. This is unfortunately not enough. So the next step is to review listings. You go on Chrono24, you go on eBay and you see their listings for your model. And then you have a, a feeling for, for the segment of the market you are in. Problem now, often you find listings on, on Chrono and eBay and they are very high, but people don't understand that mostly this is the first asking price. Or in other words, these prices you see there are the wet dreams of the seller. So people can make offers and it's very likely that the real market price that leads to a deal is way under this first asking price. And by the way, when you're regularly on Chrono24, then you see that some listings are there for years hook in the water waiting for the fool. Next point, auction results. And this of course is very helpful because an auction result is a piece of data. This is really, this tells you something. This tells you something about the willingness of people really to spend that kind of money for that particular watch. The little weakness here is um, though, um, some auctions are short, they are not well scheduled, for example in the middle of a holiday or in the summer for a watch you rather would like to wear in, in winter and so on and so on. So auction prices can be a bit too low, they can be a bit too low. So the combination of listings and auction prices then you can figure out a bit where you are, but don't take only listings and only auction prices, right? The next source of information can be articles in the press or in watch blogs. There are many well-written, excellent managed watch blogs out there. You can Google them, it's very easy. But um, here you, again you will find the problem that they need content every day. In print press we say something 
like the white must be black because you have to you, you need content just to fill it daily on a daily base or weekly base and this is exhausting this is a problem sometimes and when you hear then oh there is a bit of movement in that segment of the market let's make a story out of that and you cannot be true if this this story is backed up by data and now let's speak about data and we already have seen that an auction result is a piece of valid data but the best thing we can have is a nice chart for our watch with prices over years and now we're going to create such a chart okay and here we are on chrono 24 and of course we could now just check watches most people do this they go um, to their model let's say somebody wants a Submariner date and then they just check prices and you see this is a bit of a chaos because you have all references here you have all conditions from dealers from private persons and such and you have of course general information about the the, the model and general prices here but again you have chaos and what would be very handy is a chart for our particular watch so that we really can see interest and prices and this is very easy to make here you just go to my watches hey my watch collection i've already added two but let's add another watch and now you can't say you own the watch i mean it's not true but it doesn't matter let's take this one here rolex submariner date just as an example and you we say pre-owned I own this watch we say I own this watch very important you have here the reference number so you have a specific model here this is important okay and then you don't need to add images and now you can say your purchase price let's just say 10,000 euros and we have bought it in 2015 it's just an example source we say from uh, retail shop and we say yes it's with original box and papers serial number we don't need this is all filled out this is all filled out note we don't need and now we have another watch in our collection and now you can see the chart of this particular model and with a specified quality meaning box and papers in this case and now you see here a stiff increase in price over the years we can take five years to make it more clear here is a bit of a, of a down but since then price is climbing until now and this works with every model you can see here i've checked it with tank american this is a certain reference and there i just i just faked that i i own this watch and so to to see this chart here the watch is in a corridor between let's say 7000 and 8500 euros in this case but you cannot see really a trend the watch i actually own the tudor prince chaos stiff peak here and then it dropped and now you see also a stiff increase in price the problem now is that we don't know the data behind these charts maybe this this peak here is caused by three transactions or five or ten but not m that many and in case of our our um of our rolex um probably there are more transactions behind this but we don't know it we don't know how solidly how 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 thoroughly collected is this data here so we need to double check it we need to double check this data and this we can do with google trends and the idea now is to find our very watch on google trends and then we compare the charts this sounds easy but it's actually pretty hard if you when you're very specific here google trends will not deliver enough data to create a proper chart this is the problem but at least we can start with rolex submariner date all right so we have germany here this is not good we want worldwide and we want our five years and now you can compare those two charts and at first glance you see this looks quite different this looks quite different but we have to keep in mind this is not an exact reference number this doesn't represent box and papers this is a gen very general term okay and this is the problem with this method but at least you can you, you can figure out if something makes really sense overall or very likely that this is a bit exaggerated here 
And now we can go to the question in, in the thumbnail, Rolex versus Cartier. We could say now, okay, let's take a very common model, Rolex Submariner, and let's measure, let's measure the volume, the interest in the last five years. There we are, and now we take a very common watch, Cartier Tank, for example. And there we are, there we are, there you can see the, the, the difference between those two brands. We, are, have, we have a solid 50 here with this strange peak and Cartier is way under that, way under that. So the, the question, will Cartier be the next Rolex, it's not very realistic when you take um, these relatively unspecified watches. But I think it's worth half an hour uh, to spend here with Google Trends and these charts before you invest several thousand euros or US dollars in a certain watch model. By the way, a very interesting um, result you have when you, uh, when you say just wristwatch. And then worldwide, past five years, it's, uh, it's declining a bit. See that? This is a bit lower here. But interesting are the regions, Nigeria, Ghana, India, Sri Lanka, Pakistan. Why is that? Because they all want to have an Apple Watch Series 5. See that? So this is a bit misleading. This is just an anecdote here. And so, yeah, let's go back now. And so we had rumors, we had listings, we had auction results, we had articles, and we had solid data from Chrono24 and Google Trends. And I think, to be honest, you should use all five. At least I will do this before I spend um, big amounts of money on a watch. I, what, I want to be certain that I understand what I do, what I'm doing there, right? And when you have used all five sources or methods and you still feel a bit puzzled, maybe it's the wiser decision then go for another model. You understand better where you have better data and you have better insights. All right, this was the Cartier and price is part of this video. Please don't hesitate to make comments when you feel, ah, oh, there's something missing. I can um, add something, I make, can make a correction. Then don't hesitate, then we can learn something from you. And now I'm happy to show you three items. One I've produced myself and I'm honestly very proud of it. And the other two are also great manufactured in Germany by a small company. And now let's do it, let's go. And here you see the watch strap combo I was talking about. Nice cow leather strap, this is the case big number two, finally available after weeks of waiting together with the 90s Oris pointer date with this lovely blue, this dark blue subdial there, so very, very nice. And this strap changes the watch completely, makes it a bit lighter and brighter and more suitable for the summertime and I just love it and I just love the, the color and it's vegetable tan, so this means it will evolve a bit of patina. It's on the wrist now for two weeks and new these straps look a bit different. Here we are. This is the strap number two, case back number two. Excuse my hands as always guys. <laughs> I will show you the reason for this mess here in a minute but there you are. Italian cow leather, vegetable tanned, very nice finish because it's only a bit of of, of, of waxy finish so this is the new strap and with some patina it looks very 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 good and it has then your own characteristic and the quality is similar to the case back strap number one which is a little hit all over the world people love really love this strap because of the quality and the robustness question often is um, these straps are expensive, absolutely. And the question then, do they last longer? Answer is yes, definitely. They last longer. Black lining, by the way, because I don't like the messy look of a white lining, because yeah, we all know what happens when you wear these pieces in the summer, then you have these signs of sweat here, will not happen with this one. Also very important was for me that these stay pieces are robust and not flimsy and here they are substantial they're good looking they're clearly defined and so i'm very proud and very happy that i can offer this strap now in 20 and in 18 millimeters and the next thing i'd like to show you is something very luxurious and there we are with our first cordovan i offered cordovan for i think one week then they were sold out because it was 
um, yeah, it was a rest they had had there. And but these these straps here are produced for K spec watches exclusively, with the logo, with handmade Cordovan, handmade in Germany. And you see the the quality here of Cordovan, which of course is horse leather. This shine here is the natural the natural look of Cordovan. This is the beauty here. Look at this. And this, by the way, is why they are always tapered, so that you can really see this effect here. Very, very nice strap, very expensive, um, even wholesale. First I thought this is the retail price. <laughs> it's crazy. I will not make much money with it, but it's so cool to have your own Cordovan line under your label. And so I absolutely love these straps here. Again, with a very substantial stay piece, black lining, also very substantial, will really last a while, quite a long while. And these straps are so expensive that I could only order one edition in 20 millimeters. Very sorry, guys. When they sell quickly, I can order more, but you, you, you cannot order 10 pieces of that. Then they, they will never bought you. So this is very expensive, but it's just a lovely, lovely, lovely look. Look at this. This is just so spectacular. And even when you pair it with a not so expensive watch, it will really add some luxury to your timepiece. And so these are, this is, I think, a great addition for the shop. So these are the straps. They're made by a small company in Germany. And now I'd like to show you the new product I've made myself. I'm very proud of that. This is absolutely my favorite right now. This is a min minimalistic wallet, a viewer asked me, Tim, have you ever done a minimalistic wallet? And I thought, what is exactly a minimalistic wallet? And then I thought, yeah, something small, something simple, but at the same time, really, really well made. And you see here a calf, uh, excuse me, a cow leather wallet, cow leather wallet. And the crazy thing is I've dyed it myself. The leather here is very fine vegetable tanned leather from Italy. This stuff here, and you can see, wow, what a difference. And in fact, I've dyed it myself by hand. And the, the goal here was to achieve a so-called antique finish. An antique finish is just that you have a bit of structure and character, that not every part has the same saturation, let's say, so that you have sort of a cloudy look. And look at this, I mean, it, it really works. It's relatively stiff. It's relatively st stiff and substantial, will last decades, saddle stitch as always the the edges are treated with a creaser and then dyed and then polished with beeswax so that they're nice and and dark you have of course the cobra here and they you can use this wallet for cards and cash and and stuff there's a bit of cash there's some cards and the the clue here is that this thing is so small that you can put it even in the front pocket of your trousers, even when you're wearing jeans, then you can put it in the front pocket, which is a very secure way to have your wallet with you. I mean, imagine yourself as a tourist and in an area with a lot of pickpockets, then this is a very secure way, ladies and gentlemen, to put your wallet in your front uh, pocket because it's very, it's very, very hard for criminals to reach that. And this is used and new, they look like this. This is a bit darker. The tone here, the, the color is called mahogany, and this is Spanish red. They both have a bit of red in it. Um, brown without any signs of red is pr pretty ugly, I can tell you. But this is a bit brighter, and this is a bit darker, as you can see. And yeah, I think absolutely a matter of taste, which one you prefer. I think I will mark them both in the shop as mahogany, and Spanish red and there you are inside they're nice and clean and the finish here is pretty spectacular as you can see there's a lot of work in it because it's treated two times with beeswax and one time with a high end shoe polish and this is the yeah this is the way you can maintain your wallet beeswax and shoe polish so yeah this is a nice journey this was a nice journey turn turning this into that. And I think I will continue. I will stay with that leather. I will buy more of these, this, this nice leather type here. Look at this. I mean, it's just, just gorgeous to work with also. And then I will buy more colors. 
and I will, yeah, will make it the same way. Look at this. I mean, cloudy, but not, not, not messy. It's just, just, just beautiful. So this really is my, my wallet of choice. And you may note here some scars. Many people don't like scars, so I, I produce um, these type of wallets only for me personally because I like them. I like scars on my wallet. It's a bit crazy, but I find it beautiful. And this leather you can definitely scratch. See this? But you can polish it away. You can can make a bit of wax on it. Then you polish until you create a bit of heat, and then it will vanish. And so very, it's a bit like a high polished watch. Easy to scratch. Easy to repair. Yes, I think. And now you can imagine why I'm a bit proud here. Allow myself to be a bit proud because of all these these nice product. This is yeah, ladies and gentlemen. This is really high end, and it was a long way to reach that. And so yeah, happy maker here, happy maker. And now let's go back. Okay, welcome back. When you're interested in buying such a product, straps or wallet, then please follow the link in the video description. And yeah, now we are at the end of this video. If you want to see um, my work in detail or watches or other things I find interesting, then as always, please visit me on Instagram, caseback underscore Tim. And now let me thank you very much for your attention and until next time.